and welcome to another Cliff's List webinar interview. Tonight, my special guest is New York dating coach, John Keegan. Um, John has been around for quite a while. I've heard his name for many years, but uh, unlike a lot of the guys in the community, he's one of the ones, one of the few ones that I'm not that familiar with. So uh, I'll be learning a lot about his ideas tonight as well as you. So John, for all of us, including myself, who aren't completely familiar with your uh, your ideas and your philosophy and your history, maybe tell us all a little bit about yourself and uh, and and that sort of general introduction stuff. Yeah, great. Uh, thanks for having me, Cliff. Um, well, I've been coaching now for over ten years, and it all started here in New York, um, two thousand seven ish, and back then. Before then, I was an actor here in New York, and I was really uh, giving giving it a go for quite a long time as a theater actor and trying to break my way into movies and uh, things like that. And, uh, you know, studying method acting, Shakespeare acting, all of those things. And during that time period, I also uh, became uh, very interested in Zen, you know, or things like Zen. I won't, you know, like just sort of anything that how do, how can I become super present? How can I be very now and sort of evolving as a person? And as I went on that, you know, uh, practical yet spiritual path, you know, uh, I, I also had a girlfriend I met in one of the plays I did. And she was really pretty, but we didn't get along at all. And we'd throw things at each other and that kind of, <laughs> that kind of stuff. And one day we finally broke up. But I was definitely hanging on for dear life because uh, she was beautiful and she's all I had. And it was a lot to lose, even though we couldn't stand each other. And then finally, you know, she just didn't want to get back with me. And I tried to get back with her desperately, despite the fact that we didn't get along at all. And um, finally, it came down that I was alone. And I was living at the time uh, on the Upper West Side of New York in, uh, you know, basically the back of some guy's apartment because I was just a poor actor. And but I was surrounded by the world's most interesting cultured and beautiful women all day every day walking by me on the subway in cafes in the supermarkets in the bookstores they were everywhere and yet i would go home every night alone thousands of them like i would just look at one after another she'd be, i'd date her i'd have sex with her she'd be my girlfriend why am i home alone so uh, at that time there really wasn't much information for me I'm, I don't know, maybe 2000. So 2007, I started coaching. This might have been like 2004 or five. I said there wasn't much out there uh, for me, especially to meet girls during the day. And there was some information about nighttime. How do you do this in the night? And, and also, you know, you have to keep in mind, I was already like, I wasn't like wanting to go to drunken bars and stuff. I was already like uh, evolving as a person. And, and I wanted to meet these women and date them and have, you know, real experiences with them. And I didn't even know how to say hi. And I had a lot of apprehension around it, a lot of fear. And so what I did was I began to use the fade in technique. And I just started to teach myself to say hi to women in everyday places, you know, like on the street corner with a dog, with uh, sitting on a park bench, sitting next to me in the cafe. And, and I decided to remove as much pressure as I could because I kept finding all these reasons not to do it. Like, oh, uh, I'm not good enough. What do I, I could say hi, but what do I say next? And when I would start with like an agenda, I felt like I was about to get hit by a train or a bus, you know? So I started to fade myself in by just simply saying, you know, you know, hey, how do you get here? How, how do you do that? Uh, nice dog, cool shoes. And I started doing that. And then finally, I just started to relax just saying hi and realizing people weren't shooting me. And once in a while, someone would give me a weird stare, but even that didn't matter. Um, and then finally, I started being able to have to transition into a conversation and I practice that part. Well, how do I talk about myself in a way that's not boring? How do I get her to open up in a way that's not 20 questions? Uh, and then I started flirting. And then I started, um, I started flirting and then I would ask a girl out. I just started doing that. I started working my way up to asking a girl out five, uh, I'm having to plug my computer, five times a day I started asking her out, and no matter what, and I said, I'm, I'm gonna ask five girls out 
uh, a day, no matter what, even if they're looking at me like I have three heads or two heads. Um, and that was what burned my ego up. That's what really changed it for me. And at one point I got to this place where I felt completely free and it was a long period of time, but I felt completely free. I felt completely like I can be me. I can be authentic. I can start meeting people. And one of the biggest points in that journey was letting go of the need for an outcome, letting go of the need that women like me, letting go of the need that they approve of me. And for me, it was after about three or four months of day and night going out, like I canceled hanging out with any friends that had girlfriends, all that kind of stuff. And it was about three or four months of that day and night. And I had I started to really get uh, meet girls, have sex with girls. I started to have all these experiences. But then there was a realization, like I'm still not dating the girls I want. And every time I see the girls I really want to date, I kind of walk away or I wasn't, or they just weren't giving me the time of day. And then I just had this epiphany, like, wow, I just really tried all my with all my heart and I'm still not that guy. And it was like such a blow because, you know, I had already just tried almost 10 years to be an actor. And, you know, I, I did like, you know, I could go be in a play anywhere, but no one would pay me much more than 400 bucks a week. And um, then, now I'm not going to be a ladies man. And I tried. And then it was like this overwhelming sense of peace that finally came over. Like, you know what? I still like being me. I still like being this guy, you know, even if no one likes me. And I just began this, that's where I really began to approve of myself and love myself and let go of the need for other people's, the desperate, disgusting need for women's approval. And I took a break three weeks a month. And then one day I was in a cafe and I was sitting next to a girl and I just struck up a conversation. I wasn't even thinking about it. And next thing you know, it was like we were playing a great game of ping pong. And, and I was flirting without thinking about it. And all these skills I had taught myself and worked on and all of a sudden were happening without the muscle, without the need for her to approve and she could feel it. And from that day forth, I was never the same. And then sometime after people were like, man, I never saw anyone break the ice like this. I never saw one to meet so many women like this. You gotta teach that stuff. And I was like, no, nah, I'm an actor. Anyway, long story short, finally, I did put an ad on Craigslist in 2007 and, and it was, I thought, you know, I don't want this to be something seedy. I don't want this to be like, hey, get laid tonight. I want to be like what it is to me, which is something beautiful. It's an art form. It's the art of meeting, connecting with women anywhere and everywhere. It's the art of the flow. And I said, uh, awaken to a new reality, learn to meet women anywhere and everywhere. And I put this ad up on Craigslist and to my surprise, interesting, cool guys responded. My first client was a guy who worked for MTV and, and we just took a walk through Central Park and I showed him what I could do and, he, and it was like, all right, I'll do more. And then little by little, I started to become a great coach and I started to develop programs and I started to go from the artist mindset to uh, running a business, an entrepreneurial mindset and understanding that. And I always had this one thing in mind, how can I help men transform to who they want to be from the inside out and the outside in? So over time, I developed a series of amazing beliefs, which hopefully we'll get to talk about, and then a, a, a company with the right actions to meet and connect with women anywhere and everywhere. In 2009, I had got to the point where I was able to sustain myself as a dating coach. I wasn't working for anyone. I was, uh, I was, you know, doing it. It was really exciting to me. I was really like a free man, and you know, I wasn't. I was just breaking even basically, but I was like, I was, you know, doing my own thing, and. Uh, suddenly, somehow, through magic unknown, uh, I was discovered by the New York Times. They contacted me. They asked me if I would do this full-blown, like, one-page article on me. Uh, and I was like, at first I said no, because I'm an actor and I don't want to be known as this guy. And then, and then I also didn't know if they were going to be, you know, it's like this board, like, even though I'm coming from a good place, it's very easy to judge someone who helps men meet women. It's very easy to do that. And so, and then I came back and I said, all right, I'll do it. And they made this beautiful piece. You can link it down below or however you want it, if that's good for you. Um, 
uh, and it's a series of black and white photos of me in action and, and, a, and three minutes of me talking. So it's like an audio visual piece. And then they also did it in print. And it, it changed my life. Suddenly I was a, a guy living in, the, in a hoarder's lair basically in, uh, uh, to an internationally known dating coach all over the world. And for me, it just became like, okay, I'm gonna go all in on this. And over the years, I've gone all in. I keep, I go more and more in. I get in, literally, I would even say, um, my main program at that time to this time has been one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching. And I've done a lot of it in New York. I also do four-day really intensive workshops and but I don't think there's anybody in the world. I really don't. I know. I think I know everybody um, that's coached as much as me, day in and day out. Sometimes seven days a week. Uh, and I've coached many, many, many thousands of men. And over that time period, I really found a way. And I just look at this whole thing as one word: connection. To help men feel connected to themselves to connect to themselves, to like themselves, to accept themselves, to love themselves, to help men connect to the moment, to the present moment. And, and a big part of my work is, is unlocking the doors to the now. Hey, here you are now. And a lot of guys I work, I work with, they're so in their head, they're so analyzing all the reasons why I'm not good enough, all the reasons this moment's not good enough, all the reasons every something's not good enough or why not to do what I want to do. And it's this haze of hell that they're, this hell state they're in. And I'm just unlocking to all the reasons to like myself. And then here's how you can be simply be here by engaging your amazing powers of observation. Like, look around, man. Look at the things that people are wearing. Look at the colors on the in the windows. Look at the trees. Look at the leaves. Feel the wind. Hear the sound. Smell the smell the air. Be here now and and tune into what's happening now. Look at people's faces. What does it say about them? Look in their eyes. What's happening with them right now? Start listening to her when she's talking instead of trying to figure out the problem in your, you know, how to solve the problem in your mind. Uh, listen to her, the answer lies right before you. And so it's like, like yourself and listen to her and see who she is. And so little by little, um, that's what I helped guys do. And then it was of course, connect to her. Connect to yourself, connect to the moment, and connect to her. How do I make a connection with her so that I can have some kind of a relationship with her? Whatever it is, however short or long or however it unfolds, how do I connect with her? And connection means that we're both coming together. We're meeting. We're meeting on uh, our desires are aligning, not like I'm taking from her, not like I'm getting some pussy or I'm getting laid or... Uh, I got her. It's I'm aligning with nature and I'm aligning with her. Our desires are matching. And when that happens, you make a connection. And when you make a connection, you come you you actually then begin to experience the life you set out for and you help her experience the life she was looking for, which is your job to do that, is to take those risks to do that. So is that a good start, Cliff? Uh, <clears throat> very good uh, start. Um yeah. Tell me a little bit more about the uh, the epiphanies. I guess uh, it's one of the things that I, I often focus on is is that moment of change uh, mm. of when when uh, things sort of uh, all of a sudden start to come together and you start to understand things and and maybe you can give us more insight into uh, how it happens and how you possibly create it with your clients. Yeah. Well, the the. Uh, there's a series of six beliefs I always uh, share with my clients that I uncovered over time. You know, originally, uh, before I was an actor, I went to school for psychology. And uh, specifically, I studied uh, B.F. Skinner, which is all about human behavior and changing your behavior, how to actually change. So it's less about, like, let's talk about your childhood, and it's more like, Here's uh, one behavior, let's fade it out, let's fade in another. That was what I was drawn to. It was just an undergrad, but it was a really good school, and I, and I went for that, and I was interested in it. I was interested in human behavior. Then acting was a, an evolution. It was like being the human behavior and experience, exploring it from the inside out. 
And then uh, this, uh, this work is all about uh, changing, not just behavior, but changing beliefs, changing inner core deep beliefs and unlocking someone so they can be a natural at connecting with women. And they can naturally be themselves. Some of the, the one of the biggest epiphanies I had in this whole thing was is that as men, we've literally lost connection to our instincts, not at all connected to our instincts. Literally, and, and instead, it's totally trapped inside a hyper analytical mind. And a lot of the guys I work with are uh, analytical guys, uh, you know, like more than even a regular guy's analytical. So, that, you know, we're talking uh, traders, uh, tech guys, uh, even artists, but they're always analyzing things. Uh, and they even sometimes are rewarded for it and sometimes handsomely. Uh, but then when they bring it out into the social realm, it literally destroys it. It eviscerates the joy of life. And they were suppressing their instincts since the time they were a kid. And maybe sometimes you had to. But now I'm asking them to tune into their instincts. And this was the one, the biggest epiphany I ever had was this. Tune into your instincts. Listen to them. Beyond fear. Fear is not, an, is not the instinct. It's the instincts are calling you to connect with her, to fuck her, to love her, to be appreciated by her, to appreciate her, to play with her, to, to listen to her, to, to hold her. Your instincts are calling you all day, every day. It's your highest instinct to connect, to love, to pleasure, to do that and to so guy has this instinct over and over and over. It doesn't go away. He can even take as many anti this and anti that as he wants, but his instinct keeps calling. And he takes those anti this and anti, anti anxiety or antidepressant to quell his analytical minds and tell his instincts to shut up, but they don't. So understanding, giving your instinct full and total honor, tuning in and trusting them as a, as a guide. And basically, you can look at it many ways. It's basically millions and zillions and trillions of years of evolution coursing through you, talking to you, guiding you, telling you what to do. And you can look at it even bigger as it's an infinite intelligence giving you guidance in the now moment, right here, right now, guiding you. Just, just, just listen to me and just follow me. It's all gonna work out. Trust in this. Now, the analytical mind has all this power that you've given it and they just keep in going at war instinct connect analytical mind you're not good enough you're bothering her you're creepy but now they're saying nobody uh, men can't talk to women they're gonna call you a me too guy the, the, this whatever it is or oh you're not you know you're not just not good enough oh by the way she's not good enough either let's get out of here um and there's this my instinct clashing with the mind like two rams and really, when we stop and we really look at what's going on in this analytical mind, and we really ask ourselves these honest questions, are you there to bother her? No. Are you there? Are you trying to creep her out? No. Are you up to creepy things? No. Are you like one of these guys we're talking about in the two newspapers or whatever? No. Do you just want to like, have a girlfriend? Do you just want to, you know, have a journey where you get to know women and women get to know you and you get to find out who, who you like and who you don't and have sex with women and, and explore? Yes. Okay. So really you're just there to give, aren't you? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I just want to give, you want to give her a compliment, give her attention, uh, give her the gift of maybe a great conversation, maybe give her the gift of, a, of, of two human beings connecting. Maybe give her the gift of, of great sex. Maybe give her the gift of love. Maybe give her a gift of a really beautiful relationship between two people, which is what, what it's all about. And you can receive that from her too and share in those experiences with her. Maybe that's what you're there to do. Is that true? Yes. So you're there to give, to receive and share and pleasure and follow your instinct, which, which, which is infinite intelligence guiding you. Yes. So now you have your instincts, you free them to let them do what they want to do, and you have your intentions. 
and you align them. So it's like kind of like a prayer symbol. You're aligning them. And now you're like one. You're one instead of at odds. You're not at war within yourself anymore. And when that's true, the, the anxiety dissolves. Anxiety goes away. Of course, there's always a adrenaline rush when you see an attractive stranger you want to connect with because you're stepping into the unknown and you don't know what's on the other side, but you got to find out. And that's the and you try to you learn to make it fun. And sometimes you step on a hornet's nest and you learn to shake it off, you know? And that's part of the art of it, the zen of it. So then I even make them say, look, look, look at your instincts. They're so powerful. I mean, you're literally talking about it's connected to infinite intelligence. It's so powerful. Your your mind is like a puny little pea. It's nothing. It's a, it's like a speck of sand. Let's let, it's it, it's nothing compared to that. Let it go. Let it fly. Let it let your instincts guide you when you're talking to her. Let them guide you when you're touching her. Let them guide you, and you will find yourself all these things being answered with without you thinking. And so we free those instincts and we trust in them and we trust that we're not uh, there to hurt anyone. We're there to, to love. So, so when that happens, that's a big deal. The third biggest epiphany is, is that, yes, my instincts are good. Yes, my intentions are good. But sometimes I'm misunderstood. Not everyone's picking up what you're putting down. Yeah, yes, you're following your instincts. Yeah, you mean well. But maybe she doesn't give a shit. Maybe she thinks you are a creep. Maybe she's not in the mood. Maybe she doesn't want. Uh, maybe your mind of her ex boyfriend. She doesn't like you. Maybe you're. Maybe you're unskilled at disarming and connecting with people. Um, so your timing was off, and it did come off a little creepy. It's okay. So really, the third belief is: is I'm not for everyone. No matter how hard I try, no matter how many empires I build, no matter uh, how ripped I get. No matter how pretty my skin is and how cool my clothes are, not everyone's going to like me. I'll be lucky if 51% of the people like me. And when you accept that, no, that not everyone's going to like you, there's only one choice, and that's to like yourself and accept yourself and be okay with where you're coming from. Follow my instincts. I mean well. And if not everyone likes me, that's okay. They're, that's their prerogative. Uh, I'm going to learn to shake off the negativity because you do absorb it, shake it off, and I'm going to go over here and connect with somebody else. And those three beliefs right there, three of six beliefs, those three beliefs, my instincts are good, my intentions are good, I'm not for everyone, thank God, hallelujah, amen, because now I'm finally free to be me beyond the dis disgusting, desperate need for other people's approval. If you just practice that, and you connect that to the simple action of going outside every single day and creating a social practice, which is what I, which is basically meditation while being social. You're going out and you're saying hi to people. Like there's a beautiful girl walking by and you just simply say hi, you wave at her in the real time. Uh, and, and if you like something about her, you just say, oh, I, lo I love your hat or what a great smile or you got a real pep in your step. And you keep walking without any, any, any agenda. So now you've connected your instinct to an action. Just like if you were a martial artist and someone threw a punch at you, you'd block it. Your instinct to an action. Beautiful girl walks by, you say hi. And now she has three responses she can do. She can smile and light it up. She can look at you like, I don't know you, that's weird. Or she'll uh, ignore you, but usually if she ignores you, it's because you didn't really wave at her. You just kind of did flipper arms, like you halfway did it out of fear. But if you commit to it, you know, there's really only two responses. She either looks at you like she doesn't know you, uh, some version of that, or she smiles and lights up, and that's it. Um, and and both are good. One's good because it feels good when people smile and light up, and the other one's good because you have to learn to detach from all outcomes. You go out, you have conversations with people, and you just walk away, don't even take their number. You don't even ask. You're just talking to people, chatting them up. You become a social man. Your charisma develops. Your sense of being present develops. You become a now-based person. You follow those three things, you become socially free, emotionally free. And I call that the social practice. And then we move into the next three beliefs, and we move into not, not just breaking the ice within yourself, but breaking the ice with her. The next belief in the next epiphany that I had 
again, this happened over many years, day in and day out, coaching guys started distilling it down to the simple stuff, which is ownership. And I say it like this. I say, I've got a, I've got a job to do, man. I've got a job to do, man. And it's my job as a man in this society, this one right here we're in right now that seems all crazy, and in, and in nature, to take every single risk from hello to will you marry me, from hello to getting personal, from hello to I'm going to express myself in a vulnerable way, to hello to just finding out about her, from hello to being super direct with your intention, from hello to challenging her to see who she really is, from hello to setting up that date, from hello to the first touch, from hello to uh, to learning how to physically touch her in a way that creates heat between you that if, so that a natural kiss arises out of that, uh, from hello to every single thing between you and her from now to the day you both die, it's your job to take every single risk. And I say, I've got a job to do, man. And then I say it like this. Imagine you're walking in, uh, Imagine if you're like a, uh, a blue collar worker and you walk in and you've been on this job uh, for an ice breaking company for 20 years. You know, you've been around. And you walk in one day to this warehouse and there's this giant block of ice hanging from a rusty chain and it is ice cold. And around on the left side of it and on the right side of it, a bunch of guys with beer bellies and, uh, you know, their ass cracks hanging out saying, and they're just sitting on crates and you walk in and you say, what are you guys doing? And they say, God, boss, it can't be done. This ice can't be broken. Let's, you know, let's just, let's just not do it today. Let's take an easy day. And he looks at all those guys and he says, shut the fuck up. I've got a job to do. And those boy, those, those lazy guys represent, you know, Hey, you're not good enough. You're bothering her. You're creeping. You, you literally got to tell them to shut the fuck up. I've got a job to do because as this blue collar worker, uh, you have three kids back at home with mud on their face who need to eat. You don't break this ice. The kids don't eat. You don't break this ice. You don't have a social life. You don't get laid. You don't get love and you don't deserve it either. And you don't have charisma and you don't have presence and you haven't developed your actual self. You gotta break that ice, man. I don't care how many girls, if you're the luckiest swiper on earth. This is this is a man's job to do this. So I got a job to do, man. And 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 understanding that that risk is mine to take. It's such a like, it all sounds so simple. But the reality is, is a lot of guys are at war with themselves on that. Like, well, why should I have to take the risk? I thought we're all equal. I thought what what she wants to be equal. Why didn't she take the risk? Well, you know, we all do have equal rights. We all have equal opportunity. But the reality is, and, and and love it and accept it, no matter what messaging you're getting, that we're not all the same and that it is a man's job to do that. And if you want to date a feminine woman, especially, this is your job. If you want to date a masculine woman, it's still your job. The reality is, is there's no way out of this job. No way. Oh, take ownership, love it, and become the best you can at it. The next thing I want you to, the next epiphany I had, Cliff, was that this job is not personal. This is not personal. It's our personal life experience when we have a girlfriend, we have a relationship, we have a nice moment, we go out one night and we get laid and, you know, that happened. That's a personal life experience. Uh, when we walk up to a girl and we have a great conversation, great. When we have a bad conversation, that's our life experience. That's true. But the act of you walking up to a woman and saying hi because you're attracted to her, the act of you doing that is no different than a bird flying south through the winter or a bee getting pollen from uh, one flower and bringing it to another. It literally is just instinct that they're following. And you, you didn't invent love. You didn't invent lust. You didn't invent dicks and pussies. You didn't invent sex. You're just here on earth and you're attracted to women. And you're drawn to women, and that's nature, that's natural. And you want to be connected with women, no matter who you're drawn to. We all want to be connected. So the reality is, it's not personal. 
So stop taking it so fucking personal. When someone gives you a bad vibe, you didn't invent that person. You didn't raise them. You didn't create them on earth. It's not personal, man. So a big part of this is not taking it so damn personally and then learning to let go of any negative energy you may receive from another. And the final piece of uh, the six beliefs that we practice every day, every time we say hi to someone, we practice these six beliefs. That is that the reality is my instincts are good, my intentions are good, I'm not for everyone, and that's great. I've got a job to do, man. It's not personal. In fact, it's the most important job in the world. In the world. It's the job of the connector. And everybody you know, and everybody you'll ever meet, and every girl you ever walk up to, she wants exactly the same thing you do. Exactly. To be connected. To be connected to herself. To be connected to something bigger than herself, a cause, a god, a football team. To be connected to the now, to the moment. She wants to be here now. So everyone's doing yoga, meditating, smoking, drinking. Let me be here now. That's what she wants. And they want to be connected to friends and lovers. That's what people want. And when you walk up, every time you walk up to anybody, you walk up just bringing the possibility. The possibility, like a little seed in your hand, that two people might connect today. Just maybe. I'm gonna put I'm gonna take an attempt to go plant a seed here. And if we connect, that would be amazing. And that's really what you're doing. So uh, and, and so those are the big epiphanies I had. And when a guy's walking out there, and it's really the reason these beliefs are so important is because you practice believing as much as you practice doing. So when you're going out and saying hi and giving a compliment and getting a conversation started and all the ways that we start conversations, when you go out and you get in those conversations, you, um, you it's like, it's like, a knight in the Middle Ages going from town to town and arrows are being slung at him and he's just trying to light up the town with the torch. You know, it, it can feel like that at times. And that's why it's so important to have these these very powerful beliefs to, guide, to fall back on and guide you through um, so that you know that you're operating from a great place and that you're doing good things in the world so that you see yourself as the person you are, a good man doing good things. And... Yeah, so then, then, then I would move from there, Cliff, into, you know, the structure of a conversation and what a guy, the skills a guy needs to learn. Tell me what you've learned in terms of um, when you, uh, you know, when you started coaching. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure you've learned things that you do perhaps differently now to help guys really get it. You know, before, uh, you know, you're you're didn't have a lot of experience and then you start seeing what works and what doesn't work mm. uh, because it's, it's, you know, I think that one of the challenges that uh, coaching guys has is that it's one thing to explain it to them. It's another thing for them to actually get it and, and, and really make it a part of themselves. Mm. So the, what, so the question is, is exactly what, how can they uh, incorporate it or? Well, my question really started off with uh, how, uh, how it's evolved, your your how your your uh, you know like when you started coaching guys, to mm -hmm. how it is now, wh where I assume you found more effective methods than in the beginning. Yes, yeah. Well, in the beginning, I mean, when I really first started, you know, I was really just myself, like a great player. You know, I mean, I, I became great at the game, so to speak. I became and I enjoyed it the hell out of it, and it was fun, and it still is. But uh, but I was really just showing guys how to do it. You know. Like, hey, look at me. Here's me doing it. And I pull them in the conversation. I do it with them. And sometimes I still do that because it's effective. Um, but what I really found over time is to, for me to learn to turn the volume down so they can turn their volume up, their charm, their charisma up. And to really uh, get them in as many conversations in front of as many women as possible and to have them practicing oftentimes very specific things to get the mind off of um, you know, so that they found that so that they find value in every exchange with a woman, no matter what, and not, not, not just hey, we're getting six phone numbers, hey, we're getting laid, but instead it's like hey, 
uh, when I, if I just say hi to her, I win. That's it. I already win. And then the rest, I'm just going to keep practicing my new skills. So over time, I really just found that the early days, I was just showing guys what to do and here's how you do it. And, and, and there's value in that. And it was some, but to, but what I found lasted the most was really learning, getting these guys to practice those beliefs I just said, and then taking them into everyday places, taking them into the Whole Foods, take them into an art gallery, take them into a coffee shop, taking them into a bookstore, going into the subway with them, and find in the parks, finding every possible scenario they can find themselves in life, and demonstrating to them how to do it, and then taking them uh, in and, and having them do it over and over and over. And then, so what I found was as well, these guys are all getting great at uh, breaking the ice. They're like, okay, now they're, the door is unlocked. It's not as hard as it as you would think it is once we get going. What I found over the years at one point was I have to make these guys better connectors, meaning better at conversation. And there's only so much I can do when, I, when you're out in the field, I can like, like, for example, I can role play with you. Here's some great conversational techniques. We go back and forth. We get it down. And then we go practice it if you get that far in a conversation and you remember to practice that, right? Mm -hmm. So what I found is, is um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take uh, some of my sessions and I'm going to take it out of the field. I'm going to get a role play actress, an intuitive woman, and we're going to excavate, which means to dig down and pull out your best conversation, your your natural, your authentic self, your real self. The more authentic you are, and we can explain that word if you want, but with the more authentic you really are with yourself, honest you really are with yourself, and that's a big deal, the more you're going to attract into your life better friends and better lovers and better relationships because then you're being real and then you're not hiding and then you're not passive aggressive. And then, 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 then you, you, you'll have a happier life, you know, and you'll give people a better experience. So I found by going out of the field and role playing, how do I talk about, how do I get this guy to talk about himself in a fun way, in a way that's playful? Cause a lot of guys aren't playful. They don't know how to be playful. So how do I get, so teaching them, isolating it out of the field, take, cause being in the field's amazing, but sometimes it's great just to, so I brought my acting background and we started rehearsing. Let's have you learn how to be playful. So I started teaching improv techniques to be playful, to be fun, to be lighthearted, to be easygoing. And then we would go over and over and you, and you'll be surprised. You guys will say, oh, I have no playfulness at all. A playfulness can be taught. It can be learned, and quite easily, actually. And, and the biggest thing is, guys don't give themselves permission. So I give them permission, and then then I show them, and then they start having fun, and they feel the fun in the, in their body. They feel the fun between them and the girl, and they get the reinforcement. Then it's like, okay, how do I talk about myself in a way that's sincere, that's authentic, and even deep? And no matter what, when you're talking to a woman that you want in your life, it's always about engaging her or seducing her. So it's always all those ways have to be engaging and not boring. And the only way to be engaging is to really be listening to her the whole time and not doing what these pickup artists would do in the early days, which is tell these long fucking scripted stories. And I remember I'd work with guys and say, no, I want to work on my gambit. I want to work on my story. And then they, they would be talking to a girl who liked her quite fine. Uh, who liked him quite fine, was like there with him. And then he'd go into the story about his dead dog or some childhood story that was a page long that he memorized. And the girl's eyes would just glaze over and she would just be stuck there and unless she was quite assertive. And then she'd say, look, I got to go. And it would just disconnect. And even though that was fun, and even though that's, it's certainly important to learn how to tell stories, don't get me wrong. But in that moment, when you're really talking to a woman, it's about connect, listening to her. And knowing yourself even before you get there, knowing yourself right here and now. Yes, you, it's good to, you know, to learn stories, so I'm not negating that. And I'm not negating that guy's journey in, in doing that. But it was a lot of these guys become wooden Indians. They stopped listening uh, in their attempt to you know, play a game instead of connect with the girl, you know? And so, so then, um, I was like, okay, how can I get to know her in a, in a way that's, you know, not boring as hell, not 20 questions. So I have the guy role play out how to cold read her. And what that means is you look at her uh, person cold, you see him cold and you, 
really learn to use your observations, your eyes, your ears, your sense of intuition, and you listen to her and you guess what she does. You guess, uh, you make inferences about her based off of your observations or the vibes you're picking up, rather than where are you from? What do you do? Why are you standing here? But instead it's everything's based off of observation, which is all, can only happen right now. So even though you know there's similar things you can say in every conversation, it's always new and fresh because it's always off of what's happening right now between you and the other person and whatever's happening in the environment you're listening. So we role play those things out, but then also I, I say, okay, well, you know, a lot of these guys, what I discovered, not these guys, a lot of us guys, uh, you know, we we have some skills, you know, being physical with women, but we don't really necessarily, you know, we're like, you know. We don't necessarily know what we're doing or have the best information. So I started to share what I knew and then learn even better information than I knew. And I started to really frame it in another way that when, you, when you're talking to a, a woman, when you're there with a woman, you're engaging her conversationally and you're making an emotional, energetic impact on her. And then, of course, it's physical. It's a physical conversation. And so it's not about a physical escalation which again feels like the old days when people would say, uh, you know, it's kind of a predatory predatory feeling, you know, we're escalating, we're playing a video game. But no, that's not how I see it at all. We're having a conversation with her. Remember the truth. The truth is she wants what you want. She wants great sex. She wants love. She wants um, to have adventure and romance and journeys and no, get to know men, to, to perhaps pick a man to stay with, spend a lot, her life with. That's what she wants. So why not align uh, with her? And, and, and instead of looking like I'm escalating on her, like I'm playing a video game, look at it like you guys are having a conversation, learn how to touch her and listen to her through touch so that it naturally heats up between the two of you. And then how do, how do I have a kiss? How do I have a kiss without you know, lunging at her and having her rubber neck back or chicken neck back and, and then you get all freaked out and she freaks out? So I really started to, once again, br bring the role play actresses in and we'd explore physical touch in a way that um, felt good for him and her. And in a way, of course, that's highly effective that would, you know, how do I touch her when I first meet her? How do I touch her on a first date? How do I initiate that first kiss uh, in a way that, she, that she's really into it, you know, instead of like, I'm just going to do this now because we had a date and I'm in front of her house. How do I... Um, how do I turn a kiss? How do I go from a kiss into uh, intimacy? And and really, you know, the mindset is it's about turning the heat on. She wants to feel overcome with desire, and that that comes, you know, from having a conversation of touch, not like a, a you know, just you just suddenly thrust in. So I started to take guys out of the field and do those things, and then Cliff, over time, I began to realize that was even deeper than the six beliefs I told you. A lot of these guys don't know how to shut their mind off. So I really um, learned to teach them how to meditate. So we will stop before each session and meditate for a few minutes. And then I had one of the biggest epiphanies of my life. And that is the power of visualization. That the power that if I can actually stop, still my mind, meditate, and then imagine myself being who I want to be, experiencing what I want to experience, having what I want to have, doing what I want to do. If I can imagine myself and feel what that feels like, then I, then I can learn to deserve it. And then it starts to happen in real life. And I, found, I discovered that for myself. Like I realized at one point on my own personal journey, that the reason I wasn't dating the women I wanted to date was because I didn't feel like I deserved them. And when I began to visualize it and see the most beautiful woman in the world laughing at my jokes, looking me in the eyes like she loved me, telling me she loved me, waking up next to me it, in my arms, looking at me saying, you're a great man, and let, uh, letting that feel that, that changed my whole energy. And then things like that literally began to happen, even word for word. And the power of, and the reason now I look back, why, how did I get in the New York Times? It was something that I had visualized before even knowing how to visualize. 
and I had vision and I wrote down on a piece of paper before I was in the New York Times. It was one of my goals uh, many years before I was in the New York Times. Uh, it was before I even got even approached one girl. I wrote a list uh, of things I'll be great at, you know, and one was I will be known as one of the world's greatest ladies men. And I wrote that and I tacked it on my wall in my hoarder's lair home. And uh, and that and I put a bunch of other things too, but the one I really stuck to was that one. And after I was in the New York Times, and after I finally was moving out of the hoarder's lair, I was cleaning up all my stuff, and behind a couch was a, 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 a yellow stained piece of paper crumpled up, you know, like this big. It was just a little thing I tacked on the wall, and it said, I will be known as one of the world's great ladies' men. And the name of that uh, article that came out in the New York Times was called The Ladies' Man. And that's just so powerful about uh, when you put something out there. And then I, you know, I met a girl who is uh, a, a well-known supermodel, and she became my girlfriend for many years. And she used to say to me, you're a great man. You're a great man. And I was like, I was blown away because I would visualize a beautiful woman saying that to me. So then I began really working that with my clients. Like imagine yourself walking down the street being super present and I go through a series of visualizations. I've created a product now, a guided visualization product and that takes you through all these stories. The one number one story is just becoming a social guy. Number two story is going um, going out and having uh, very in-depth conversations with women in everyday places and getting dates. Number three story is going on an instant date. Number four story is uh, traveling to a strange city and uh, going on a, a great adventure. Number five story is being in a relationship and love. And I found that to be very powerful. But at the end of the day, it always goes back. All that's important, but nothing's more important than going out and just simply saying hi to people every day. That's probably one of the most challenging uh, 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 tasks that uh, guys face, and a lot of them re uh, have uh, uh, animosity to the fact that they feel that men have to be the ones that do that, which I think is just an unrealistic approach. You know, it's mm. just that's the way we're mostly socialized: is that uh, it's the man that that initiates the contact and starts, uh, you know, starts the process. Mm. Um, you have, uh, I'm sure you must run into that, uh, being a challenge for a lot of your clients and a lot, I keep getting asked all the time about what to do about approach anxiety and maybe you have some mm. thoughts on that. Yeah. Well, you know, there's a lot you can do, but you know, some of the things we do is, is we, we really look at what it is and it was like I was talking about earlier, which is like, you have these instincts and you have your uh, analytical mind and are at war with each other. And that war is the approach anxiety. It's causing cognitive dissonance. Go go meet her, say hi, you're not good enough. And that's the, ah. Uh, so, and then the third thing uh, is, is, you know, caring too much about what other people think about you, right? Caring too much about where it goes. So when you, when you uh, honor your instincts and you follow them and you trust them beyond your own little puny mind, and then you realize you're there to do good things and you're practicing detachment, practicing that it's okay if she doesn't like you, uh, learning that that's actually good for you. Um, if you look at throughout, throughout history, if you look at like the Christ story, um, and this is not a religious thing, that I'm talking you know, from a religious perspective, I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about the Christ story. He was crucified on a cross. He died and he woke up three days later and he was see-through. He was clear, he was translucent. And that's kind of, a, can be a metaphor or I'll interpret it as a metaphor for the ego being crucified. And then he comes back and he's, you know, he's, he's so light you can put your fingers through him and he's more powerful than he ever was. It's important that we go out and face that crucifixion, face that rejection, so that we can see that it's that we can transcend it and and learn to love ourselves, even if the whole world doesn't, because we know we're operating from the right place. So the approach anxiety is energy coursing through. You see an attractive woman to this day, every day. I see, and there's beautiful women in New York, like I, like I, nowhere I've ever seen. You know, there's a lot of beautiful women in the world, and and I see a beautiful woman. 
it's not, I'm, I, there's always resistance. We can just call it resistance, but it's like energy, adrenaline pumping through you. It's not anxiety, it's adrenaline. It's, ex, it, but the problem is, is you stifle it when you don't listen to it, right? So it's so, when you just unleash it and just start following it with action, and I'm just gonna walk over to her, I'm just gonna say hi in any way. And if you're really, it depends on where you're at. Like if you're like, don't worry about picking up girls. Don't worry about that. Only focus on starting and then walking away. Start and then walk away. So if I just say hi, I win. Now I met, like I said, and, and since that girl, I've dated a lot of beautiful girls. But one of my main girlfriends in my life is a well-known supermodel. And I met her on a park bench. I looked at her. She was the prettiest girl I'd ever seen in my life. I'd never dated a model at all up to that point. I had already been in the New York Times. I looked at this girl and I said, you know what? I wish I could date a girl like that. And then I said, I'm, I'm not going to do it today. I'll do it tomorrow. My back hurts. <laughs> and then it was like, well, I, you know, I don't know. I'm tired. And I said, you know what? And this is all happening less than a second. If you just go over and say hi, you win. Then you'll be that much closer to dating a girl like that. I walked over and I said, the most boring thing anyone's ever said to anybody. And I just said, nice boots. And they were pretty boring, pretty regular boots, to be honest. And she said, these boots? And I just looked at the boots and I said, oh, yeah, they're like kind of worn out, but yet they're kind of cool. And she's like, oh, thanks. Then I switched to the next observation, which was her book. And she had this book she was reading, Too Big to Fail. And I started talking about it. Anyway, that started, that's up, you know, that started a three year live in relationship and now uh, an eight year friendship or something. So, if it's, I just say hi, I win. I don't have to do more. In that case, I happen to do more. But many times I just go up, I say hi, that was good enough, and I walk away. And Because the, and, the biggest thing you can do every day is go from not doing to doing. As soon as that pendulum swings, and when you practice going from not doing to doing every day, and I always say five times a day, just wave at people, make a comment, walk past them. When you do that, you create momentum. And when you get momentum, you get out of your head. And once you're out of your head, you're, you're invincible. How's that? That's uh, good. Um, yeah. What other uh, challenges do you find are, um, I guess, common among the guys that come to you for coaching that, and what sort of solutions do you uh, sort of offer them? Yeah. Some, some big challenges are, you know, really just worthiness, you know, am I worthy of this? Um, is this, uh, the, the biggest thing over and over is perfectionism over analytical perfectionism. It stops us in our fucking tracks. Like I could do this, but I, you know, it's not gonna, you know, I'm, and now's not the right time. I'm not right right now. I'm not, don't have the six pack. There's always finding the 99 reasons why not to do it. it and, and then finding the, uh, instead of the one reason why to do it. And that's just not just on the start. Like when I was talking about taking a risk, it's not just the start. During each conversation, there's a series of risk points. The first one is a saying hi. The next one is transitioning and getting personal. The next one is talk about yourself in a vulnerable way. The next one is learning about her. The next one is being direct with her, telling her you like her and flirting with her in some way, and challenging her. The next one is asking her out. The next one might be to hug her. And then when you go on a date, there's a series of risks to take. So it's like getting comfortable being uncomfortable, understanding, getting uh, each guy to understand that it, it, it's really, don't expect it to be easy. You know, don't expect it to be easy. When I was an actor, I had this acting teacher named Vincent D'Onofrio. He was really a famous actor, a famous character actor. You can look him up. He was like Full Metal Jacket, Gomer Pyle, Law and Order, Criminal Intent, whatever. He had this private workshop I, I was lucky enough to get into, and he would just work with some of us. And I, and I was doing this scene, and I kept working on this scene in this workshop, and I fucking hated it. The whole thing felt like a struggle all the time. And then the whole class, this is all like master actors, and they would get up and clap. Oh, my God, that's your best work. And Vincent's John, that's your best work. And I and, and I, fuck, I was so frustrated. And I hate it. I said, Vince, I don't know what you guys are talking about it. I am so frustrated. This Every moment of this scene feels like a goddamn struggle. And he said, John, don't you get it? The struggle is the scene. 
boy meets girl, it's a struggle. It's two sw salmon swimming up the stream. Of course you're going to feel nervous. Of course there's going to be moments of tension. Of course you're going to feel like walking away. Of course you are. You're going through your haze of bullshit in your mind. She's got a haze of bullshit in her mind. And you're trying to meet her right here and now in the moment just to make a connection and see if you guys can get to know each other. There's a lot of fear around all that. So get comfortable being uncomfortable. And when it goes really well, uh, praise hallelujah. You know what I mean? And when it's a struggle, praise hallelujah too because it's normal and get used to it. We're like pilots in turbulence. We breathe through the turbulence. We stay calm and we fly everyone home. Yes, uh, that's uh, it's quite uh, quite an approach. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe you can tell uh, tell our readers a little bit more, or listeners rather, uh, uh, you know, about uh, what sort of coaching you offer, and uh, maybe if you have any products. What tell them about you know if they want to follow up with you on learning more about how you do things and, and what, how they can benefit from you. Yeah. Well, I, I work, um, my, my live coaching, I work two ways. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, here in New York and around the world. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching in New York. That is, um, an ongoing program where we meet 10 times. And so if you're living in New York, or you're going to come spend in New York, uh, for a month, which some guys do for me. And we meet twice a week. And in those twice a week, we meet two hours each time. And when we meet those two hours each time, uh, we go through all those things that I just told you. A lot of it's live and field. Some of it's role playing. Every time we're meditating and visualizing, we're creating those stories. I also do uh, four day workshops, uh, which is a minimum or sorry, a maximum of four guys in each workshop. And I only do a few of those a year and they're eight hours a day for four days. Again, all the same contents covered and you can see it on my website, theawakenlifestyle.com. And then I also uh, now have a course out called The Art of the Flow, which you can buy on my website, which is a three hour audio of me going around New York, uh, talking to women anywhere and everywhere. And on that, um, I give a full breakdown of each conversation and exactly what you can do, uh, how you can recreate that. And I have an accompanying workbook. Oh, that's, uh, that's good. So, uh, I guess you're, you're, uh, you've got quite a few options for someone who want is, wants to follow up with you. Yeah, I would love it if you do. And then I, in about three months, I'm going to have my first video course out. And that's going to be cool. But this audio course is really powerful because you really get to go, you know, it's not like, you know, you go on YouTube and you watch a bunch of pickup videos. Uh, it's like really intimate conversations I'm having with women in a quiet bookstore, uh, in a park bench, um, in, in an aisle four of the Whole Foods, uh, on a subway. Like, so these like intimate places. And it's not pickup-y. It's not, um, I chose... The, the conversations, not because look how cool I am or how flashy, but because look how simple it is to break the ice in these places, which means to start a conversation and disarm them, and then to transition and have a conversation. And the, here's what I'm talking about, and here's how these are turning into dates, and all of those turned into dates. And so, and then I really give the whole philosophy there, and it's really quite powerful and it's unique because it's audio, and you can listen to it when you're walking down the street or while you're driving. And then there's a book. I had, a, had the whole the entire thing translated and then edited in book form and chapters, so you can literally read out the conversations and read out the breakdowns. So it's really powerful. And also on my site, I have a, a free learning library where you can go, and I have uh, actually with some guided visualizations on there, meditations. I have um, body language ebooks. Um, I have a lot of free stuff for you guys. So, and I also have a YouTube channel with, you know, over 200 videos where, you know, I really uh, always try to bring an awakened spin to everything and enlightened to self-actualization spin. Uh, but of course, at the same time, it's all very practical because I'm uh, out here on the street every day, you know. Well, I, I have to uh, thank you very much for taking the time with me tonight. Uh, I think you've provided some very enlightening and spiritual information. Yeah, thank uh, you good quality uh, ideas I think that guys can take a lot out of uh, and um, I'm hoping that uh, you know people do benefit as much out of this as, uh, as I think that they could. 
Yeah, thank you for giving me the platform and uh, allowing me to connect in with you. You know, I've heard uh, we never got to talk before, but you know, since my earliest days, I knew of Cliff's List, so it's exciting. You know, when you reached out, I was like, oh, this is awesome because, uh, you know, uh, you've been a really important part of men's development for at least ten years. Am I right? Yeah. You know, it's uh, getting closer to twenty years, actually. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that, I've, how about this? I've known you for ten years. Yeah. So that, that's that's you know, so that's pretty awesome, man. And uh, you know, uh, we're we're in a bit of a renaissance with uh, with my project here, Cliff's List, and you're going to be seeing a lot more from us from us pretty soon. So, are, are uh, you got, are you ever going to do any um, any like I know you used to have some kind of live events or um, you know your or stuff like that? Are you ever going to be doing that kind of stuff? We're uh, definitely got that in our plans once uh, once things sort of stabilize with what we've been doing. So uh, there may yeah. be another Cliffsless convention coming up sooner or later. Oh, I'd love to! I'd love to be there. Well, I'd love to have you there. That's for sure. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to uh, thank you again, and then um, you know uh, I'm going to hopefully uh, hear a lot of good comments about this and uh, let get you some uh, some response to this and hopefully a lot of people will, will benefit from it all right well thanks so much for having me uh great to meet you guys and uh that's it all right sounds good